want to do God's will. What you're seeking is a blessing from God. You must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. Great to have you here. And uh, if you if you've watched many of these, you know that an issue that I I really care about, probably at least partially because I was adopted at birth, is uh, the issue of abortion and and just getting down to the root thing. And I always go right back to, hey, look, when when does life begin? Let's have that conversation, and then let's accord human rights close to it at least come on you know can we just let, let's look at the science let's have the conversation and let's talk about abortion itself well today's guest um, has taken a bit of that approach and she has a film that was in theaters back in May uh, and is now coming in just a, a few days the end of this week to Salem now which is a great platform if you've not seen it um, uh, 2000 mules has been on it recently which is a lot of people have heard of that film uh, and we're on light source right now which is a Salem property. So uh, we, we love Salem around here and appreciate what they're doing. And coming this Friday, you can see uh, a documentary called The Matter of Life. And I have the uh, maker of that documentary with me today. Her name is Tracy Robinson. Before we talk to her, however, I uh, hope my audio levels are good. I forgot to check them. I want to show you the trailer for The Matter of Life because that'll really give you an idea of the film itself uh, and ho hopefully whet your ap appetite, make you want to go out and see this uh, as soon as you can this Friday on Salem now it'll be on other platforms uh, later in the summer but I would urge you to see this one immediately this is the matter of life I think this is the battleground culture issue yeah. in America today how is it that we can trust an organization for whom abortion is such an important part of their business model to simultaneously effectively prevent pregnancy and prevent abortion. The problem in America today is that people simply change the topic. The key to successfully talking about abortion is to try to bring the conversation back to one key question. When you're an obstetrician gynecologist and you're pro-choice, you have to decide whether you're actually going to do those abortions. I believe that being pro-life is the most progressive value that we can have. The abortion industry is most threatened by Christians engaging in pro-life work. Finding that pregnancy center was the only person I had to support me at that time. She's got to know when she takes that pregnancy test that her church is not going to treat her like the Pharisees tried to treat the woman caught in adultery. As a church, we can't just vote pro-life. We have to be pro-love. That is the documentary, and uh, you missed the Fathom event in May, so you'll have to uh, you'll have to check it out and see them now. The maker of that film is Tracy Robinson, and she is with me. Tracy, great to have you on Life Today Live. Thanks for having me. So let's get into uh, the the topic and give people a little bit of an idea of kind of why you decided even to dedicate this amount of time and energy and money. And I mean, this is I, I know enough about production to know that this consumed you for a while. Why did you do this? <laughs> yeah, well, the documentary itself clarifies the abortion issue. And uh, it, it really is for people that are on the fence about abortion, or maybe they've been pro-life and Christian their whole life, um, but really haven't engaged in the issue or communicated it. Um, but what sparked this idea, it was about six years ago in 2016, I was doing film work for a pregnancy resource center. I was uh, commissioned on and off to do testimonial videos and promotional videos for them. And I had never heard of a pregnancy resource center before, a pro-life pregnancy resource center. Um, but I was very inspired by what they were doing to help women, give them resources, education. Uh, and it, but as an evangelical Christian, even in my late twenties, I was in the mushy middle when it came to abortion. Mm -hmm. I was essentially pro-choice uh, because I thought, well, I'm personally pro-life, but who am I to enforce my beliefs onto other people and to make it illegal to have an abortion? And and it wasn't until my friends at the pregnancy center, the staff there, 
invited me to an apologetics conference and the topic was going to be the case against abortion. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'll go and check it out and see what my pro-life friends are talking about. And in less than two hours, my mind was changed. Um, the speaker, Alan Schleeman of Stand to Reason, he gave a clear, concise argument for the full humanity of the unborn child from the moment of conception. And he invited us to look at fetal imagery, uh, the abortion aftermath imagery, and the truth really struck me. Hmm. And so was this vision. So did this vision for a feature length documentary film. Uh, I was so I just knew that there were so many people in my shoes who had never heard this message before, mm. uh, that they went to public school all their life. Uh, you know, they their family never broached the topic and even sat in church all their life and just never was given this perspective. I think many people are just uh, not ever invited to think deeply about this issue. They, they pick up on the euphemisms of the culture and that's it. Um, and so I was, I had no idea about Roe v. Wade at that time. I didn't know the truth behind Planned Parenthood. So I decided to figure all that out by myself and <laughs> go on YouTube and read books and figure out how we got to this point. And so I, I, you know, wanted to share that journey with others. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. We tend to talk around abortion, but not about abortion. Um, what was it? Were there, were there uh, you know, a couple of things in particular that stood out that made you go, wait a minute, uh, you know, all these crazy pro-lifers, they, they have a reason to be so, you know, uh, kind of almost hardcore in a lot of cases, and I consider myself one, that, that kind of moved you. What was it that moved you from being, well, you know, I don't support it, but it's I, I can't tell you what to mm -hmm. do, to where you're at now? Well, just recognizing that abortion at any stage kills an existing human being because life begins at the moment of conception. Um, and so we, if we know it's wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human being, and we, we now know because of the science of embryology uh, that abortion does that at any stage, then therefore abortion is wrong. Uh, the logic is so simple. And what was really inspiring to me was the fact that we don't need Bible verses. I mean, I love the Bible, but we don't need uh, to communicate um, with religious arguments in order to prove our case, mm. because uh, life is a, life is uh, the the science of embryology. That's a fact. Uh, you can't argue with the science in our culture, um, and so people just need to be made aware. And I was very, you know, just passionate about that early on. Every time I have this conversation, uh, I will get comments such as riffing off your comment of the science of embryology, they'll say, well, see, it's an embryo. It's not a, it's not a person. H how do we, how do we get past some of the, you know, I know oh, it's a fetus. It's not a person. It's an embryo. It's not a person. Um, mm -hmm. what to go, okay, yeah, look, yes, we, we use terms for stages of development, but I mean, you've mm -hmm. also got a toddler. Are you going to say that's not a person, mm -hmm. you know, you got an infant, a toddler, a, child and adult i mean these are all stages but they're all stages mm -hmm. of personhood yeah fetus just like toddler we talk about this in the in the documentary um you know teenager um <laughs> adult these are these are all referring to age ranges within our species um and so if, in arguments or in discussion about abortion with people uh, you know, they're hard pressed. Like, I mean, I think the biggest question is what is, uh, what is it at that very small stage, um, even at six weeks or 12 weeks, what is that thing mm. that we're talking about? What is it that we're ending the life of intentionally? Um, and often that's where people you lose, you know, that that's where they can't answer that. Mm. Uh, I think it's so powerful to bring in imagery uh, really people, it's very difficult to argue with fetal imagery, like looking at this, a chart, uh, or looking at video imagery of, of a developing embryo and fetus mm -hmm. and helping people realize, look, we all start at this point. Mm -hmm. Persons all have a beginning. You and I started as an embryo. Um, and that was an epiphany that, that is revealed in the documentary. We, we, uh, hear from a former abortionist, hmm. and he gives us that huge perspective at the end 
of just how it was always you. There's only one you. And I think once people humanize uh, that, when you really put a face to that unborn child, to that fetus developing in the uterus, um, people's hearts and minds are changed. Yeah. No, I, 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 I think that your approach to, to show people and not condemn, just condemn the, the action, which I think is condemnable, <laughs> you know, but, but to actually walk them through and let them make up their own minds because you, you can win an argument, but lose the person, you know, but when you, when they come to the conclusion on their own, then, then you don't even have to argue anymore. What we there's a lot of abortion films and documentaries that have kind of bubbled up over the last you know decade or so, which I, I love. Uh, what was sort of the unique angle that you took on yours? Mm -hmm. uh, well, my background is in uh, film production and primarily as a video editor for documentaries. That's been my career and my specialty. And I was really passionate early on about unraveling the data, the information to people in a compelling and visual way, mm. uh, in a way that's high quality and, and good production value. And I, I love documentaries that peel back the layers. They don't just hit you with all the information at once. And so I wanted to do that. I wanted to take people on this compelling discovery journey of, of thinking for themselves about abortion. Um, so we reveal this, not only the science of embryology and the philosophy behind that, uh, we go into the history of Roe v. Wade, of, of how in our culture we got to this point. And we also um, highlight amazing pro-life work. Uh, we show people hope of how they can make a difference and how people are making a difference now to help to help women in pregnancy. Um, and uh, so that was part of what inspired me was discovering this multifaceted pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. um, so not only do we... We peel back the layers and give it this information in a compelling way. We also invite people to get involved, to make a difference for them, for someone else, mm -hmm. uh, no matter who, where they've gone, what they've gone through, what they've chosen in the past. Um, you know, there's no, and then there's no um, situation or circumstance that God can't use for good. Um, so right. there's no person that he can't change. There's no circumstance that he can't turn around and use for good. Yeah. You know, one of the criticisms, and I know you, you've heard it and you dealt with it, um, is, is the idea that people who are pro-life only are anti-abortion. And it's like, once a kid's born, you don't care about them. Or, you know, there's a mother who's, uh, in a crisis pregnancy and you don't care about her. You just want to force her to have, you want to force birth her. You know, all these kind of weird constructs that have come up. Um, as you were investigating sort of the pro-life movement or whatever, what did you see in the way of support systems for women, uh, both before uh, birth and, and even for the women in, after they've had the child, where are they keeping them or adopting them out? Uh, and then even the child it, itself, you know, um, who was born into a situation where, a, a, a mother, maybe the dad's probably gone uh, and the mother is unable to, to take care. I mean, it, did you see a lot of support outside of just the anti-abortion part of it? Absolutely. I, I mean, the pro-life movement is really on the front lines of pregnancy help and pregnancy support. Um, we highlight organizations like Embrace Grace mm -hmm. um, who equip churches to be a support system for pregnant single moms. Um, and they become these wonderful communities where a woman doesn't have to feel alone. Um, and then Students for Life, they equip uh, students on campus. Mm. There's very little resource uh, usually on these university campuses, but girls are getting pregnant all the time. Um, and Students for Life is there to give her resources and options and education in that regard. Um, so, and then of course the pregnancy resource centers across the nation, uh, they are filled with people that are, um, faith, you know, they, they are people of faith often. Um, but sometimes, uh, they're just people that really care passionately about giving people, giving men and women options, giving them education and, um, helping them see their baby in, in utero, you know, in the ultrasound. Uh, and giving them resources and often up to the a lot of pregnancy centers I've 
run into and, and gotten to know, um, they provide resources up to two years old, up to that baby's age yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so, and they're just there to personally help those people and give them support. And that's, that's exactly what she needs at that, in that stage of her life. So, so right. And if you happen to be in a situation that you don't know what to do, you need to know there are resources out there for you. Uh, and uh, I don't, I don't have any written down to give. Do you, do you for do you push people to any particular place to find them like online? Well, on our website, matteroflife.org, people can go to the take action tab and find all different kinds of ways to get involved, even to find healing for yourself. If you've uh, if you are feeling the pain and regret of an abortion in your past, uh, there's different ministries and Bible studies. But if you want to get involved in education or pregnancy resource um, or just church outreach, uh, student outreach, there's there's a lot of categories that we list and resources that we give on our website, matteroflife.org. Perfect. I, I love it. I was showing it while you were talking, and that's, that, that is fabulous. All right, well, I want to ask you if there's anything uh, that – maybe shocked you or surprised you anything you learned while in this process of making the film but before you answer that question i want to show people the poster this is the matter of life and if you're jumping in midstream uh it'll be on salem now uh which is a great web platform salemnow.com uh this friday uh and for the next month so you can you can definitely check it out for yourself and if you you know know somebody who is in that mushy middle as tracy was um Give them a little more information. And by the way, I love, go back to that. Are the unborn one of us? That right there is the question that we really have to, to, to hound on. Because if you get into a discussion, immediately they want to take you away from that. You know, and it's like, you know, let's let's go back to this. And if you need a little more support because you're not an expert and, you know, you haven't spent your life, you've got a film out there that will walk people through this whole issue. Uh, and so you, this is, I think we can win this battle, honestly. I mean, you're not going to win it hundred percent with everybody all the time, but especially as, as we roll into the future, hopefully a decision will come down soon on Roe v. Wade. We're going to be fighting this in 50 different States. We need these resources, uh, like Tracy's film, the matter of life. So Tracy, there's undoubtedly something uh, there's there's a moment when you're going through this where you somebody says something or you see something and you're like oh my gosh do you have any of those mm -hmm. yeah absolutely midway through production i learned the staggering statistic that four out of ten women with an abortion in their past attended church in the month they became pregnant and uh so i was interviewing rollin warren of carenet and he gave a good point that this is an issue for us as Christians first. Mm. Um, we need to overturn Roe v. Wade in our own pews. <laughs> and uh, shortly after that, I learned that more than half of major Protestant denominations in the United States are uh, silent, either silent on abortion or that they make exceptions for abortion. Um, and so it's no wonder you have four out of 10 women who, uh, you know, four out of 10 women having abortions uh, that are churchgoers. Um, so, and then it just kind of creates this cycle where, you know, pastors and leaders, they know that their congregation has had abortions um, and they don't want to offend anybody. So they stay silent. Yeah. And so the cycle continues. You don't have, you don't, you're not giving perspective to these young adults on what abortion actually does. And so, um, so that was an epiphany for me that, wow, maybe, Maybe the Lord is is going to use this film to to wake up Christians and uh, bring more people, more faith based, more uh, you know, of God's people <laughs> to the front lines of the abortion issue. Yeah. Um, I think it's a huge opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus to address the abortion issue. Is to to really convey is an opportunity to convey the love of Jesus to people. Um, he you know he gave his life. Uh, in our weakness, he saved us. Um, and so we can do the same for others. You know, we can stand up for the most vulnerable in our society, which is unborn children. Yeah. Yeah. And again, if someone out there is pregnant and doesn't know what to do, uh, let, let me just say personally, as, as someone who was an unwanted pregnancy and as someone who 
my mother could not take care of me, and so she gave me up for adoption. Um, 25 years later, after I was born, I, I found her. I tracked her down. I just talked to her this weekend, actually. Um, but we, we've had a wonderful relationship for the last 27 years since I found her. And when I called her, uh, didn't know her. She was a stranger, even though she gave birth to me. I told her, thank you. I said, 25 years ago, you probably made a very difficult decision. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. I've had a wonderful life. At the time, I had two kids, now I have four. I, there is that hope for you. Now, not, not, you know, I mean, people are people, so you, you never know. But just if you will give that child the opportunity, um, good things can happen. And so that's, you know, I, I that's probably why it's so close to my heart. Of course, my dad, the, the man who adopted me, James Robinson, he was the product of basically rape. Uh, it was like a date rape kind of kind of situation. And so when you talk about, uh, you know, rape and incest, which is a very, do you know, in your, in your research, Tracy, what percentage are, are rape and incest? Because we always talk about those as exceptions, and you kind of, you referenced those a minute ago. What do, where do you yeah. go with that? Well, statistically, it's 1%. Often people will justify the 99% because of the 1%. But in the film, we don't tiptoe around these very valid questions that people have. Mm -hmm. Like, what if she's raped? Um, what if she had really no choice in the conception? Um, that is a legitimate concern. Mm -hmm. um, so we we really, we address it. We, we profile a woman who was raped when she was in ninth grade at school by a girl, uh, by a boy she was talking to and um, how she made the decision, even amidst the pressure of her parents, her dad was furious and um, uh, was pressuring her to, to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there was something inside of her that said, no, you have to, I, I have you, like God told her, you got this, I, I'm gonna protect you. And she told her parents to stop the car on the way to the abortion clinic. Mm. And so we we not only address uh, the issue of rape, but we we show how beautiful open adoption can be. Mm. Um, just to to give life to someone, um, you know, and not you know not putting the death sentence on someone who doesn't deserve it. So um, yeah. we we wanted to address things like rape and what if it's her body involved. Shouldn't she have a choice in that? You know, there are, these are legitimate questions that people have. So we don't tiptoe around them. We we unravel and bring truth to them. Yeah, and I can't imagine. I mean, as the father of two two girls, um, it, had they been in that position, it would have been very very difficult. Uh, you know, I, I it would have been a very very difficult situation. But when when a man commits a crime against a woman, you should punish the man, not the child. And, and that's unfair to the woman at the same time. And so it is, I appreciate you addressing that issue. When people have watched your film, uh, The Matter of Life, um, what kind of responses are you getting? Well, the, the biggest thing is gratitude. I think overwhelmingly people are just grateful. Either they've learned, they've really had perspective for the first time um, and they're, they're just really inspired or they're re-inspired. Maybe they've been in pro-life work their whole life and suddenly they have this renewed vigor. Um, and uh, and then um, they're, some of the biggest advocates for the film are people that have abortion in their past. Hmm. Uh, they're some of the biggest cheerleaders for this film because they recognize that this is a preventative tool um, to, uh, to pre prevent the hurt and the pain and the regret that they experienced over the abortion in their past. Um, I've met people that have been confronted, have, have decided to get healing for themselves mm. after watching this movie. So um, overwhelmingly, it's been just gratitude has been the response. Yeah, good. Have you? I'm sure you've seen in the news that, uh, well, okay, a couple of questions. I want to ask you about what you think about Roe v. Wade being overturned, but these crisis pregnancy centers and or pro-life advocate places uh, that have been attacked and spray painted things like if you know if women aren't safe then nobody's safe i mean like basically violent acts and threats uh there's been several of them they're not hitting the big news but 
there have been several of these that have been hit in the last two to three weeks. Do you have any reaction to that at all? Yeah, I think that, you know, my prayers go out for people that are doing pro- doing pregnancy center work. Uh, you know, they must be on edge and especially to those that have lost their centers. Uh, there's been a few of them that have been vandalized and just the photos are devastating. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just kind of shows how the enemy is angry. You know, there is movement and there is change happening. To me, that just shows that we're doing something right <laughs> um, because um, the enemy is is afraid and he's that's all he can do is really just tear things up and destroy. You know, that's that's what the Bible promises, that the, the devil has come to steal, kill and destroy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was a murderer, murderer in the beginning. Um, so he's angry that good, a lot of good is happening. Um, so it, I think it, and it backfires on them because they reckon, you know, that's, that is not good PR for them. No, it's not. Um, and, uh, it gets people even more paying attention to wanting to discover what's right and wrong and what's true and false. Yeah. Um, so I commend anyone out there who is working in a pregnancy center, you're, you're doing a great thing and you're on the front lines and just keep going. Um, your work is making a difference. Um, and, uh, I, I just know that the pro abortion side, the pro abortion, not, I don't like to use the the term pro choice, uh, loosely. Um, they don't like light getting in because once you let a little light in, it completely casts out the darkness. Mm -hmm. And there's people are so pro-abortion advocates are so against these pregnancy resource centers because they are they foster life. They educate people on all of their choices. Mm -hmm. Um, And once you do that, once you empower people to actually be pro all choices, (laughs) life, you know, darkness doesn't have a chance. Uh, Death doesn't have a chance. Um, So the abortion industry cowers in the corner at just the slightest, you know, sliver of of choosing life. And that's why they don't really like these pregnancy centers. Yeah. And there's a lot of money uh, Mm -hmm. being made in in abortion. That's right. right. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense to go, uh, yeah, we're pro-choice and you have one choice and that's abortion. (laughs) That's right. Or to say uh, these pro-lifers, they don't care about the, the mothers. And now we're going to go bomb the crisis pregnancy centers that are caring for the mothers. It's like, yeah, you, you're not making a lot of sense. What about Roe v. Wade? What do you think? Well, um, I'm really excited. I think that there is going to be a, I'm, I'm praying that it's going to not be a mushy decision, mm-hmm. that it's actually going to do a lot of good and um, bring the power back to the states. That's what I'm really hoping and praying for. Um, the fight's not over when we overturn Roe v. Wade. Right. It's still going to, it's actually going to, uh, ramp up um, because you know the states that are already pro-abortion they're going to be even more pro-abortion uh, like my state of California um, it's becoming a haven for abortion um, mm-hmm. so and you know uh, they'll fly girls out for free and put them up for free and give them free abortions uh, from these more restrictive states so so really uh, it's gonna it's gonna heat things up in in terms of the um, you know the abortion the anti-abortion movement, which I'm proud to be part of, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm anti-abortion. Yep. Me too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good good for you. All right. This is uh, the website matteroflife.org. You can go there for, again, for resources. If you need some help, Uh, if you want to get involved, places, you've got places to get involved. If you want to host a screening, you can do that there. And of course you can donate, uh, support stuff like this, man. My goodness, you spend, too much money on popcorn going to see top gun which which is great that's fine but let's let's support some of these causes as well and if you want to catch it starting this friday salemnow.com looks like this right now 2000 mules is front and center uh but very soon you will see matter of life uh up there as well and you can stream it wherever you're watching whatever you want to watch so check out those two websites tracy i appreciate your time appreciate your your work uh using your expertise for something so wonderful. Is there anything that you want to add before I let you go? Um, well, just to anyone out there who's had an abortion in their past, like I just want to uh, remind people that there's no sin too great that Jesus can't forgive. Um, there's really no nothing that he can't use for his good and your good. 
um, and for the good of others. Mm -hmm. Um, So be encouraged. And um, most people in the front lines on abortion, a lot of them have been involved in abortions in their past, and they're making a huge impact now in saving lives. So I just want to encourage people with that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Tracy Robinson, appreciate your time and uh, sharing that with our audience. You guys, The Matter of Life. The Matter of Life is the film. Matteroflife.org is the website. Go support this and educate yourself and educate others. Show this to your daughters and your sons and grandsons and granddaughters and screen it at your church because as Tracy pointed out, this is an issue that's going on in the church. Uh, man, the idea that we need to stop Roe versus Wade in the pews, a little sobering, uh, but we can do it. And she's given you a great tool to go there. So do that. Hit share, hit like, hit follow, hit subscribe. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. In spite of our rebellion, in spite of our sins, in spite of our failures, God says, I love you. I love you. I love you.